What's up guys, welcome to my channel. Sorry for the um, jiggling right there, my phone is in the mount. So I have both hands for you to do this video. Um, this video is a bearded beater production video. Um, you guys are gonna get to see me create something. I have no idea what yet. Um, I haven't looked at my uh, inventory of pieces in a while, so we're gonna take a look and see what we got. I'm also gonna show you guys what each container has so that as we're going along, uh, if you decide to start making jewelry, which is part of the reason for this video, you will know what to look for for parts. Um, this container, uh, as I don't know if you guys can tell, has very small beads. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember what they're called, um, but they are basically very tiny uh, disc shaped, so to speak. You guys aren't going to really be able to tell um, unless I put one on one of these head pins um, or eye pins I should say um, so I'm gonna get as close as I can this is, a, an eye, is an eye pin it's for doing rosaries for example one side is already looped all you have to do is put the bead on and then you loop the other side which I will also show you how to do alright so and then we have stringing wire which is also very important uh, if you're going to do any sort of strand necklace bracelet etc so I'm gonna set these things aside and as of course I'm talking I'm realizing that I've forgotten my tools either upstairs or downstairs so there will be a brief moment when I'm off camera um, if you need to get a drink go to the bathroom uh, get a pen and pad to write things down so be it uh, just give me two three minutes and I will be right back Alright guys, I'm back. Uh, most YouTubers would cut the video, but I'm a real world guy. Sometimes you forget things. So we're going to go buy the pieces of these jewelry tools I have. I have an old set and I have a new set. Uh, so here we go. The old set, which is actually going to go inside the carrying case for the new set, we have crimping pliers these are for when you're using mostly where when you're doing strung beads whether it's a bracelet and uh, necklace whatever these are what cinch the crimp, crimp tubes closed they also use these on industrial wires cables etc 
we have wire cutters which are specifically designed for jewelry wire. Um, these do not damage the wire and the wire is designed to not damage the cutters. These are round nose pliers, aptly named because the arms, if you will, are perfectly round and those are four looping head pins or eye pins. And I've got two sets of those, so I don't really need to show you both pairs. These are wire straighteners. Um, I believe they're also used in industrial settings. These take rolled wire and straighten it out. If there's any kinks, dents, bends, these will straighten it out. The hard plastic and sometimes rubberized plastic is what is on the inside here. Other than that, it's pretty much all the same. Um, tweezers, you've got a bead scoop for scooping them out of whatever container you may have them in. I don't generally need that. Um, and then you also have these cutters. Um, these are also wire cutters. These are just a higher quality. Get this back in the set for now. All right, so now we've got some of the pieces and some of the tools named. Now I'm gonna show you some other pieces that I have. Now you'll see these at any of your local stores. Uh, if you're from Michigan, Walmart, Meyer, Kmart, if you can find one. I believe Target may have some sometimes. These are letter beads, mostly used in children's craft products. Uh, you know, whether it's school, Sunday school, etc. More beading wire. This is medium strength or medium thickness. There are different weights and there are different thicknesses for different projects. And depending on what you're going to be making, you might want a thicker strand that will hold up to more weight if you're going to use a heavy pendant, for example. This is very fine. This is for very light projects that may have a few beads, maybe a pendant. Uh, you don't want to put anything too heavy on this. This has a test strength of five pounds. The medium has a test strength of 26 pounds. The fine is 10 pounds. And this one right here does not say, but it's seven strand Aculon. There's several brands, there's several off brands. I've used them all. It doesn't seem to make a difference to me. These are more of those little beads. These are brown and gold colored. Now generally I use round beads of varying sizes. Um, I have various types, various colors. These are either five or six millimeter glass beads. They're white, they're all white. Nothing special about them uh, other than being white. Um, most of these beads that I have have actually been used for other projects that got cannibalized, but I do clean them uh, before they go back into the pile. So, what I think we are going to do is I think we're going to start with a looped project. If I can find enough head pins or eye pins, which will be in another container, um, I find that the looping uh, will be easier than trying to string and use crimp tubes. Um, the only real effort you'll expend in doing the looped uh, pieces, as I as I call them, will be the actual looping of the ends of the eye pins, which, depending on your strength, will be easy or not, but will definitely be easier than trying to hold a strand, put beads on it, do the crimp tube without just losing everything in the process. So we're going to go ahead and open this container here. These are the newest pieces I bought for a project I did last year uh, for my girlfriend, or late 2017, I honestly can't remember at this point. Here we go, more eye pins. They come in varying lengths. I prefer the short ones because I don't use big beads anyways. Um, and as you can see, in this container I have this very cool blue color and I have this very glossy black color. These are the same size. These are six millimeters. 
Um, I also have a strand of eight millimeters. These came from Joanne Fabrics. Some may have come from Michaels. Uh, those are the two main craft stores you're gonna see someone who does beading go to, but Walmart, Target, all of your local stores that don't sell just groceries are bound to have something you can use for a project. I've used old keychains, new keychains. Uh, I will cannibalize pieces from anything to make anything. That is the beauty of jewelry. It's subjective. I'm a very OCD aesthetic kind of person, so all of my pieces have some sort of mathematical equality to them. But when I do custom pieces, I will do them to the order specifications. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. Um, my hands are a little dry. Sometimes that's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing, so we're gonna see how this goes. I'm gonna tilt this down a little bit so you guys can see the actual creation process here. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the top of this container right here to actually hold the beads as I'm looping them, that way they can't get away. Because once you cut these strands, open to get the beads, they will go everywhere. But I will let the loose ones go in here. So. And fortunately, the wire cutters are actually great for this, so if you don't have a pair of scissors, it's not that bad. For anybody who's curious about anything you see or hear in this video, uh, leave it in the question or leave it in the comments and I will answer it in the next video after this one. There may be a political rant coming up in a video or two, uh, but I've not decided that. Alright, so, the way this works is you take the bead, and I'm gonna see if I can zoom in so you guys can see better. Yes, I can. I get my fingers there. Alright, so you're gonna take, you're gonna hold the looped end, and you're gonna put it through so that the bead is efficiently on. And you want it to be able to spin a little, otherwise eventually the bead will crack. So then what you do is you're going to take your round nose pliers, you're going to hold the bead so that the loop at the bottom here is flat against your finger. And then depending on how big you want your loop, loop to be and how much room you have on top of the bead, you're gonna need to determine where you wanna place the round nose pliers to make the loop. I always start a little ways in. It's never the same each time, but adjustments can be made as you go. Now, as you're gonna see, I'm gonna slide it down as I go. And you can't tell right now, but I'll show you when I get there. When you get it around and you you want it to touch the wire. You want it to touch the pin. And it may have spun a little bit so that it's not a complete 90 degree angle from the flat end that you were holding, but that's okay because the beads will turn anyways. Now I'm gonna grab my flat pliers, regular pliers. Uh, if I can find some. You know, we're gonna use the, here we go. These are not jewelry pliers I'm about to grab but I'm not sure where those are, to be honest. So here we go. I'm gonna put this right up to the camera so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, see now I've made my loop. Now with jewelry pliers, what you're gonna to wanna to do is again, holding it so that the loop that was already there is flat against your fingers, you're gonna to wanna to take your pliers very carefully, just at the very tip of the pliers, you're gonna to wanna to pinch inside the loop that you made and pull it back just enough so that it's a perfect circle and it will pull away a little from the wire and it may turn just a smidge but that's an adjustment you can make with those flat pliers and if you want what I usually do is I pull it back even just a little farther and the outside edge of the plier will in fact push the end out which will make it easier to slip the next loop on. And me being OCD, I tend to make sure that all the loops, the ends of the loops, face the same way. And once you have the loop on, now you don't have a bead on this one. And I'm sorry if you guys can't see this. I turned on all the lights. Um, but 
I will come close to the camera when I'm doing this. You see? Now, the other, the end of the loop that I made is not closed yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna close that. You just take those same flat nose pliers and you get back inside that loop, okay? You get back inside that loop and then you just pull it down again. So now you've got a closed loop around the pre-made loop on the second eye pin. Then you take another bead. Now I'm gonna do black on this so there's an alternation here. Now I have to cut the strand with the black open, so give me a minute. I don't know how long it's gonna let me record for, but if it cuts off, I will make a part two. Uh, the part two may not be as long as part one, and I may not go all the way through the steps um, because it will become quite redundant. Uh, I will post pictures of the finished product um, on my Facebook page. Uh, if you Google, or I should say Facebook search, Facebook for the Beaded Beater, which is where I'm guessing some of you followed me from, uh, you will find pictures of the finished product, and I will display it in my next video, regardless of the topic of that video. Okay, so now I've got a black bead, and I'm going to do the same thing with this one that I did with the blue bead. Okay, now you can't see it, bead fell off, but that's okay. You can't see it, but the loop I made goes this way. So when I put the black bead back on, me personally, I'm going to want to make my loop go the same way. So I'm going to have to turn it around so that the loop is going this way. And then with the round nose pliers, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. And there will be other people who make jewelry who tell you do them separately and then loop them together. It, For me, it's just easier to do it this way because then I can see it as it's going together. So I'm just going to turn and then I'm going to slide down and I'm going to turn some more. And then if you see that your loop's going to be too small, just rotate the pliers in the same spot. Just pivot. Pivot and it will make the loop bigger. I should probably turn this, pull this up just a little bit. Okay. So just like before, we have a completely closed loop flat pliers and boom somewhat open loop again facing the same direction as the other one now again you guys aren't going to be able to see it there's no amount of lighting or backdrop I could have that would fix that uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the other way just so you guys can see the process again if you choose not to do it the way I do it. This time, however, I'm going to use a bigger bead as an accent piece. This is an 8 millimeter, a bluish silver, I guess I would call it, a shiny gray, maybe. All right, now, the pre made loop is going clockwise. So we're going to hold that flat. Now you're gonna have less pin, so you can't make your loop as big, but that's okay. It will not alter the course of the necklace, if that's what you're making. You could also make a bracelet if you don't have as many parts. So we're just gonna turn, turn, turn. Now, my loop is touching the bead, but when I pull it back with the flat pliers, it will actually pull off, and then when I close it, it will be just shy of it, which is what I'm going for. So we're going to get inside the loop here. We're going to pull back. And now my loop is open. So what we can do is we can decide whether or not we want to go blue-black or black-blue. And you can put it on either end and decide later. Uh, I'm going to go black-blue just because, again, my OCD for aesthetics. And sometimes <laughs> they might get stuck, so you're going to have to use pliers to pull them out. So, like I said, we're going black, blue, and then we're going to do the gray accent. Here, my loop is going this way. So this one, we're going to want to go the same way. So then you take, I'm holding it by my, by my loop, and I'm going to make sure that my loop on this bead 
now is going the same way. And this is why I don't do this because sometimes they will wiggle and with dry hands you're not going to have such a good grip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and hold this with the pliers. I'm going to take this. I'm going to find my pre-made loop again. Okay. And boom. Now, just like before, take the flat pliers and just squeeze it in there. Try not to push the other bead back off. Okay, you close it up, and then me personally, I'd always pull it back just a little bit so it's not hanging completely flat. And if you have to, sometimes it will pull back off. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna hold it, and then just take your flat pliers and very slowly, very gently, squeeze it back together. And these these loops, these these pins, regardless of the material, will only hold up to a certain amount of weight. You can put any pendant you want. These are metal pins, they will hold the pendant. But I cannot and will not personally guarantee that if you are wearing a necklace, for example, and something gets caught on the necklace, and when you come up, I cannot guarantee that it will not pull the pins apart. However, the benefit of that is that unlike with a strand necklace, if you bust a strand necklace, the pieces will go everywhere. With this, you may only lose the bead on the pin that opened, but most likely, you won't lose any parts. You will just have to make sure to not lose the whole piece altogether. So, that is how you loop. Just for instructional purposes, I will switch up and I will do the strung and then depending on how the comments go on this video, comment whether you want me to finish this piece or the next piece that I'm gonna do, which is the strung piece. And in the next video, I will finish whatever project or whatever product you've chosen. So we're gonna set this aside. Uh, we are gonna put this. I'm gonna use this empty pill bottle. It just happens to be laying around. This way I know what I'm saving from the rest because these pieces are all loose. Okay, so now that that's safely put away, I'm gonna pick the Aculon seven strand, 0.15 inch, which is 0.38 millimeter wire. Silver, it does come in different colors. There's silver, gold, there's black, there's matte um, of those colors. There may be other colors, I know hemp, comes in many other colors. All right, I'm gonna zoom out for this, because this is more of a uh, full picture kind of thing. All right, so what we're gonna do is they come in these spools with a plastic thing, so really you can decide how much you want without having to unspool the whole thing. I'm only gonna do a few inches, because I'm only gonna do a few beads, and I'm gonna do a pattern so you guys can see the difference. Um, hopefully you guys can see the wire down here, because there's no way you're gonna see it on my white shirt. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to cut a piece. I have not measured this. I would guess it's somewhere around 7 or 8 inches, maybe 9. And sometimes with this wire you might want to use a pair of scissors because it may just not cooperate. Most important part about doing strands is these are jewelry clamps. Okay, Put it on whatever project you're doing as far up or down as you want it will hold the beads in place on the end as they're sliding down. That way if you drop it, you may lose them from this end, but they're not gonna go all over the place because you should be able to catch at least one end. That being said, now let's pick some beads. I will show you how the little beads work. There are many ways to do this, and in my next video, uh, if I have one, I will show you how the jewelry board works. Um, it is a piece of foam felt covered plastic or wood that has the designs, has the cutouts in which you put the beads and then you can simply string the wire through. So we're gonna pick the small beads that I already showed you guys. And again, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of these beads. Um, I know at least one of my subscribers 
does, and hopefully she will comment um, so that I don't feel as silly. Okay, now what I do, I'm just going to do the mishmash of colors here. I'm not going to even pay attention to what colors I'm doing here. Okay, what I do is I take a handful of beads. If I'm doing a specific color, I will separate them and I will do it that way. And I will separate piles and do a little bit at a time. But what I do is I'm going to come up close to the camera for this. Okay. I'm going to take the end of the wire. And I'm just going to pick up the bead with it. Okay. That is a frosted clear. This is a translucent blue. We've got a milky white translucent red and in just the other color in my hand here is a nice translucent green now this would make a nice pattern it's not one I would wear but it does have a nice multicolored effect and as you see they go down and the clamp holds them in place if you'll want to have more than one so that if you get up in the middle of a project, you can clamp off both ends. And they're tight, you can't pick it up and throw it, but they will hold both ends pretty tightly. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take, for lack of a better word, let's call it a bead. You could use this shape of bead for many things. I usually use it in the middle of a strand or I may loop it if I have an eye pin big enough and the hole runs through here so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and feed the wire through it just like we would anything else and as you see now you've got a multicolored effect and you've got this big bead which will stand out regardless of what you're wearing with it now to finish this off what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and complete the pattern on the other side and it will be a very small piece but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the beads on here, and then I will clamp the other side and add a few more just so it could be a very small bracelet, for example. So what do we got here? We're going to take another handful of beads, and we're going to go translucent green. And then after each bead, you can either hold on to them, or you can just grab it and let it slip down. I always find letting it slip down is the easiest. That way, there's a lot less you're going to lose, if any. Okay? Red. Milky white, translucent blue, and these beads will not always be cut the same, and that's okay. If they were cut the exact same, it would look too mathematical, and that's just my opinion. So blue, and then we're going to go with the frosted clear. Okay, so now that, that completes the equal pattern that we've got here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add more to it. And I'm going to pick a different color this time, so I'm going to need to go to a different container. And I'm also going to need to find the crimp tubes. The beauty of jewelry making, as I said, it's subjective. You could easy peasy mix up looped and strung, and I've done that. It makes interesting pieces. They don't always hang like this would, but they will hang. And if you're making pieces like earrings, it's a neat effect. Let's try this container here. Let's see what we got. Now these are round beads, but I think they might throw a nice variation into the mixture. You can't see, and the lighting won't help, but there's many, many colors here, many shapes, many sizes. And I think we're gonna go with a nice flat but glossy third there it's a solid but glossy yellow so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go yellow and these are perfectly round beads which have more of a separated effect as much as a ball chain would that you would see on dog tags and such um, the small beads here will almost be a tubular effect when they're all strung and clamped tight you can do whatever you want. I will say time and time again that jewelry is subjective. What appeals to me may not appeal to you. 
I've made several pieces for other people, very custom pieces. Um, I started making pieces for me and then branched outwards. Like I said, this video will be the looped, as you've seen, and the strung is which you're going to see. I will finish both projects, or both products, in following videos. Um, in the comments, I'd like to see which one you'd like to see finished first. Um, and then when both of those are finished, I will do a hemp video. I will tell you now, doing hemp takes a very, very long time and a lot of patience, so you will not see the whole piece made in one video. You will get the idea of how it works, and then again, on my Facebook page, you will see the finished product, and you will also see it in future videos, if it has not been sold. Um, and all of these pieces that you're ever going to see me make will always be for sale. So now we've done yellow, let's pick another color. Um, let's pick... Honestly, I don't know what to call it. You could call it red orange, you could call it burnt orange. Um, I do have orange and I do have red. This is somewhere in the middle here. And then we're gonna do what's called tiger's eye. It's a brown, it looks like wood. It's got two varying shades of a brown wood color. We're gonna throw that on there. And then just for funsies, let's do a cat's eye frosted clear. It'll look white. Um, they might label it white. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clamp the end that I was just stringing so that we can do the same thing on the other side. Yellow. Burnt orange is I'm gonna call it. In my opinion, the best beads do happen to be the translucent ones because in the light, in the sunlight, they will glow a little bit better. But on darker fabrics, you will want the um, opaque colored to stand out. We got the tiger's eye. I have them all mixed up here, so sometimes it's a little tricky finding the same ones. Alright, then we're going to finish with the same one. The frosted clear or white, if you will. And the end beads here are a little bit bigger, but that will also help in the crimping process. Now let me see if I can find the crimp tubes. If I don't have any, I will just clamp both ends of the piece. As I said in the beginning of this video, I have not looked through this inventory in a very long time. But alas, I do have them. And you will need the crimping pliers for these, but I will show you how those work. Crimp tubes are very small, so you're going to want to be very careful when handling them. Um, and in pieces, if I do a necklace, I generally double the wire. Um, the thickness and the weight will hold the crimp tube better. So we're just going to set this down very carefully so we don't lose it. We're going to pull the clamp off. And then what I do is I'm going to go ahead and put the crimp tube on one side. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it very carefully and I'm going to feed the other end of the wire through the crimp tube and through as many beads as I can get it because then you have a stronger two strands going through the beads which means it's a lot less likely to break and you may have to pull it back a little bit and fiddle with it to get the wires but eventually it will just line up and go through as many of them as you can you can also do this with pliers on a necklace I would but this is just a very small um, crimp right here that won't really fit anybody uh, you could use it as a keychain though it is kind of a neat pattern I did here We got it through the first end and that's fine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna feed the first end of the wire through the first bead on the other side. 
and you'll want to make sure ahead of time that the holes in your beads will fit whatever wire, loops, pins, or hemp you are using. Okay. Now, as you see, pulling it nice and tight here, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and clamp off one end. And because these clamps are open-ended on the back, you can easily, I would use a pair of pliers here to hold the end, and then you just pull it through the clamp, and it will get nice and tight there. Now you're going to take your crimping pliers, and I'm going to hold the clamp on there, hold it with the clamp on there so you guys can see what I'm doing here. You take the first end of the crimping pliers, and you squeeze it nice and tight. And that will separate the wires, but hold them together. And I don't know if you guys are going to be able to tell. It didn't actually hold it that tight, so I'll have to do it again. But the crimp tube is right in between those two big beads. So we're going to crimp it again, except we're going to go 90 degrees from what we did before, but with the same side. And you'll see that crimping pliers have, for this reason, two very separate crimping points. Once you've got it tight so that the beads aren't falling off, and then you're going to use the other side, and you're just going to go ahead and crimp it again, and then it will make a nice round tube again. And as you can see, it's being a little tricky tricky with me here. So you may have to hold it on the clamp end and very, very cautiously slip the pliers in there. And it may take a few tries to get this right. It'll, it'll depend on the piece. And you might just want to, you know, kind of go around and around. Eventually it'll come out round. And you won't notice it when you're wearing it unless you use a very thick piece or something. Now this is where the wire cutters come in again. You can also use scissors if your wire cutters are acting up. You want to get as close between the beads that the wire is sticking out of. Get as far down as the wire on the wire cutters as you can get. And then if there's any left, push the excess. Oop, that crimp came a little loose, so we're gonna have to retighten that. And sometimes that'll happen. But as long as you have one end, you can still hold it tight and crimp again. Sometimes I've been known to use the flat pliers just in case the crimp isn't cooperating with the pliers. And there are different kinds of different colors and shapes of crimp tubes. Again, it's all preference. Now, are you gonna stay tight this time? Yes, now it's staying tight. So what we're gonna do on the other side, like I just said, get as far down on the cutters as you can, snip, snip, and then if there's any left, you just feed it into the hole. Now, you don't want it to be super tight because eventually it will pull the wire apart. You want a little, but you don't want too much either. So this is the finished product. Because of the big piece in the middle, you might not want to use it as a keychain. It won't fit around much, but it is just a nice example of what you can create. Okay, so in the next video, the looped project, which I started, will actually become a full piece, and I will make another strung piece so that you guys can see what a full piece looks like. I hope you enjoyed this video. Stick around for the next one. Leave any thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, uh, any purchase requests, specifications. Um, just leave it in the comments. Thanks for watching.